Branded looks like it's going to be one of the best decks this format, but post ban list, it has a new card it can abuse. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I have another Branded Despia deck, except for this one, abuses Thunder Dragon Colossus. We're going to go through the card by card and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm playing and why I'm playing it, but make sure you stick around to the end because I'm also going to be showcasing some of the combos this deck can do. But first, as always, if you haven't already, go grab yourself a cup of coffee or something. That way you guys can sit down and tune in. So post ban list, Branded really looks like it's in a strong place this format. The deck already had a really good matchup against the Fire King variant of Snake Eyes, and that looks like it's going to be the more prominent version of the deck. And trust me, there's a bunch of ways you could build Branded, and I really think that this Thunder Dragon variant has a lot of potential going forward. But starting off with the monsters, of course, we're going to be playing three copies of Alibur, very standard for the deck. And this time around, we're actually going with two copies of Tragedy, alongside one Ad Libitum, and the one Guiding Quem. Usually, I play a smaller Despia package, but in this variant, I like having more engine and I'll explain that further as we go along. But then for the Albaz stuff, of course, obviously we're going to be playing three Albaz and then I'm playing two copies of Cartesia, one Albion and one Mercurier. I'm not playing multiple Albions because I'm not playing a 60 card pile. The more I play these Thunder Dragon cards, I could definitely see myself adding more of them to the main deck and actually making it some kind of 60 card list. But now for the new package that we've added to the deck, it's the Thunder Dragon lineup. We have one copy of Thunder Dragon Dark and one copy of Thunder Dragon Hawk. It's been a while since these cards have been in in the meta so in case you don't know what they do dark has two effects where in the hand you can discard it to add another copy of itself which obviously we never use because we only play one but the main effect that we use this card for is whenever it's sent from field to grave or banished you can add any thunder dragon card from your deck to your hand we have so many ways in this deck to be able to banish this card whether it's from the deck from your hand or from the graveyard so once you do you now get to add the hawk and hawk can discard itself to then special summon the dark back to the field hawk also has the effect when it's banished you can mulligan cards in your hand but again the main thing we want to use it for is bringing back that dark because now we've met all the requirements we need we can tribute off that dark and then summon colossus for free we'll go over all the ways we can trigger these effects later so make sure you stick around for the combos as well there's some basic ones i'd like to show you and speaking of ways to banish that thunder dragon dark we have the one bestial sorenir and the lubelion to search it depending how the format plays out i could even see myself increasing the number of bestials i play but we'll see how things pan out as time goes but i know these cards are amazing in this deck and they also have that unique synergy with the thunder dragons as well being able to just banish them to trigger their effects like i said i could even see myself playing like a 60 card pile that plays more thunder dragons and more bestials to mitigate all these combos but i think the thing i like the most about this variant is it really just plays like a powerful branded despia deck that has the option to go into colossus whether it's adding to your end board or if you're in a matchup that really gets hurt by it you can go out of your way to make sure you stick it on the field but now hopping into the spells one of my favorite cards in this deck is three allure of darkness this is one of the reasons i've added the extra tragedy and the ad lib as well because when they're banished their effects get activated as well this is one of the strongest cards in this deck and that's why i wanted to play less than 60 because seeing this card is so strong plus technically if you have thunder dragon dark in your hand there is the synergy with that as well that not only do you get a pot of green but you just got a free colossus in the process like i've mentioned this is just another reason why you could potentially add more thunder dragon cards to your deck because this card is so strong but another powerhouse in this deck is gold sarcophagus another card that you would always just play in branded for consistency but now if you already have your branded card combo this is literally just a one card colossus in this deck i think that's one of my favorite things about this package is because it really doesn't go out of its way to make your deck inconsistent i'm also playing a copy of foolish burial again another consistency card helps set up a lot of plays and get you access to cards that you need at worst this gets you to branded fusion by dumping tragedy but again if you already have access to those other lines you can just dump thunder dragon dark and then banish it with something like albion or abysteal and then there you go you get a free colossus in the process and speaking of consistency we're we're also playing three copies of Fusion Deployment, not only getting you access to Albaz when you're trying to break boards, but it can get you Cartesia as well. I'm telling you now, if Thunder Dragon Dark was a level 6, this deck would be insane because then it could be sent to Grave with Granganol. But speaking of teleports for the deck, of course we have three copies of Branded Opening, one of the best cards in this deck, not only for consistency, but adding more to your end boards. Of course we're playing three copies of Branded Fusion, the god card of the deck, alongside Branded Loss, basically telling your opponent they can't touch their cards while you're playing. We also have the Branded in Red, one of my 
favorite cards in this deck, and I have added back the Branded in White as well. This is essentially a Palmerization, so if Branded Fusion gets Ashed, you can use Branded in White to fuse with your field in hand. But if Albaz is in the grave, then you can use it as a Miracle Fusion. So again, just another pseudo Branded Fusion for the deck that does take a little more setup, but also it banishes from the grave. So that's just another thing to keep in mind when you're setting up plays to set up your Thunder Dragon Dark. But then for my non-engine, I'm running three copies of Forbidden Droplet. I just think this is universally one of the best defensive and offensive board breakers in the game. I'm not running Super Poly, even though I could make room in the extra deck for some more generic targets. I just feel like Droplet right now is universally the better card and has a lot more application in more matchups across the field. But the last quick play that I'm playing is the one called by the grave. Obviously, it stops Ash Blossom or any hand trap thrown at you, but also doubles at hitting some of the fire cards out of your opponent's grave, whether it's the Princess or the Garunix. But the best response to Ash Blossom is Triple Tactics Thrust. This card is so insane for the deck, not only as a board breaker going second, being able to search out something like Triple Tactics Talents, but also it searches Branded Fusion or Branded in White. It can get Fusion Deployment as well to help you break boards. This card's so versatile, but another funny thing is if you get hit with Abyss Deal, then now you can search Gold Sark and then Banish Dark to get a Colossus on the field for free. I know that sounds random, but it's pretty funny, especially when it's Magnemut that they hit, because now with Colossus on the field, they won't be able to add with the Magnemut. But of course, you're really just setting duplication if your Branded Fusion got hit with Ash. That way, you can just build the same board you're going to build on their turn. But even post side, it grabs stuff like Shadal Fusion, which is insane against the Fire King variant that I've talked about in previous videos. But then the last card of the deck, of course, Branded Retribution. You gotta play it. This makes for 45 cards, which I think is pretty reasonable for all the stuff we have included. But like I said, the Thunder Dragon cards are so cool in this deck. And while there are other variants that you could play, this build has been so much fun to test. But before we hop into the extra deck, I just wanted to showcase this beautiful Smart TCG Metal Field Center. They have a wide array of choices online and they are constantly selling out. The thing that makes this so great is you can sync it up with your phone to any application. For me, I always set it up with Neuron. So when I'm at Locals, I can just tap my phone to the Field Center and boom, I'm ready to go. The link to Smart TCG is down below. Plus at checkout, make sure you use my code CARDSANDCOFFEE10. That way you guys can save another 10% off your order. Plus a portion of that purchase comes back to the channel and it helps me make content for you. They have a wide array of stuff to choose from. So make sure you guys go show them some love. But for our extra deck, of course, we're running the One Colossus. I've been talking about it the whole profile. This card is insane. In case you don't know what this does, while it's on the field, your opponent can't add cards from their deck to their hand. It also has a built-in destruction protection where you can banish a thunder monster from your graveyard to protect it whenever it would be destroyed. And like I said, the way you summon it is by using a thunder dragon and a thunder monster, but it also has the effect where you can cheat it out by special summoning it to the field by tributing a thunder monster on your field after you've activated a thunder monster effect in your hand this turn. This card is so easy to cheat out in this deck, but I will say one of the downsides to this is it is a special summon, not a fusion summon, so we can't bring it back off of something like ad lib if it leaves the field or gets banished. That would be completely insane if we could, and again, maybe if you were playing a heavier Thunder Dragon lineup in this deck and made it organically with Thunder Dragon Fusion, then maybe there might be something there. But in addition, we have the Draco Stapelia alongside the Guardian Chimera. These are just the supporting fusions in this deck that come up all the time. But for our Albaz stuff, of course, we're running two copies of Mirror Jade, the boss monster of the deck, alongside two Albion and, of course, one Lubelion. As far as Albaz stuff goes, this is all very standard, but one thing I'm doing is running the one Titanoclad. This can bring out a Dogmatica card from your deck during the end phase, or Albaz, I guess, as well. So a lot of the times, it's just another thing you can add to the end of your board by bringing out Quem. Or if you get hit with something like Nibiru, now you can chain a Mirror Jade, send the Titanoclad to Grave, then in the end phase, the Quem will hit the field, and you can send an Albaz to Grave. This is really great because now when your opponent goes to the extra deck, Quem will bring back Mirror Jade, but then Mirror Jade can dump Rinbrum, which again, not only gets you that Banish, but at any time, now you can Banish this to bring back that Albaz that you dumped with Quem. It sets up a lot of interruptions, plus not to mention anything else you might have triggered in the end phase. We also still play the Sanctifier. We are not playing the Puppet Lock. You could technically cite it if you want, but going into this format, even without any of these secondary engines like the Puppet or the Thunder Dragon or even Dragoons, I think this deck is perfectly capable of winning without them, but I think finding the right package that suits your playstyle is what's most important. But the Albion's really great for the deck, no matter which variant you're playing. But then of course we're running the Granganol, so versatile in this deck. Again, like I mentioned, it can't dump Thunder Dragon Dark. It would be so insane if you could. It would set up so many easy lines. This can bring out Queridus to shrink all your opponent's monsters attack to zero and even float into Albaz if you needed to. But also you can bring out the Proskinian, which is so great at bringing out cards from your opponent's grave and banishing them or putting them on your side of the field as well. Well, but also as a defensive option, I'm running the one Lulu. That way I can tag into something on my opponent's turn. Again, this card isn't needed for the deck, but it does
does have the graveyard effect to float into one of your light spellcasters, so it can get Cartesia and Quem as well. But that's it for the extra deck. Now let's hop into some of the basic combos this deck can do. All right, so for the first combo, it's just going to be Branded Fusion by itself. There's a bunch of lines you can take with just Branded Fusion, but in the matchups where you feel like Colossus is an auto win, this is a way you can get straight to it, even though it's not the most optimal line in the books. And of course, the more engine you have, the crazier your boards get. But with Branded Fusion, all you'll have to do is activate it. As long as we didn't get hit with Ash, now we can send these two to Grave. Luvalion will hit the field, and now we can use its effect. We can discard any card from our hand. You'll shuffle itself and the Albaz back into deck. This will make Albion, and then you can activate the Albion effect. You can banish itself and a Dark Monster in the Grave. This makes Predaplant Draco Stepelia and triggers the Dark in the process. This will add us the Hawk, and of course, now we can activate its effect right away. We can discard it to Special Summon it back to the field. Now we've met all the requirements we need. We can go ahead and send this to the Grave, and now Colossus has hit the field. And another one of the crazy things about this line is this line works through Dimensional Shifter. Thunder Dragon Hawk does not require you to discard it to the Grave. The card you discard for Lubelion will get banished, but the end board is exactly the same. And I don't know if you've noticed, but both Draco Stepelia and Colossus are insane against both Kashtira and the Fluwanderese matchup. Again, that's not what this combo was originally intended for, but the fact that it does this through Shifter is really amazing. And again, this is just the one card branded fusion combo. It's nothing crazy, but when we have more engine alongside it, we can make a heck of a board. But the main two card combo I wanted to show you involves getting Alibur and Cartesia on the field. So whether it's fusion deployment into Cartesia and normal summon Alibur or normal summon Cartesia and bring out Alibur with branded opening, there's a bunch of different variations of this two card combo and you have a bunch of ways in the deck to search these cards out as well. But in this case, we'll just say we have the deployment and the Alibur because that's a really standard two card combo to open. But I think one of my favorite things about this combo is you have some cool options at the end, but we'll go over that in a sec. But of course, now we're going to start with fusion deployment and summon Cartesia from the deck. Next, we can normal summon that Alibur. Of course, Cartesia is there to kind of block Imperm and Valor. But to just show you what the full extent of this combo can do, we'll assume we don't get hit with hand traps. We'll go ahead and pick up the branded fusion and then we'll activate it right away. Again, if we already had access to dark or a different way to trigger its effect or get it to the grave, then we can send something different to make our board even crazier. But in this case, if we have no other way to get access to it, then of course, we're going to send it with branded fusion. Very similar to the first combo. Now we can make this Lubelion. We can activate its effect, discarding a card to fuse as chain link two. Now we're going to go ahead and activate Cartesia to fuse after. But one thing that's kind of unique to this combo is we're actually going to fuse not using Cartesia on the field. You don't have to use Cartesia as material. So we're going to actually use these two monsters. It's a fusion and a dark. And we're going to make that Draco Stapilia again. Then Lubelion will resolve. We're going to put itself back alongside the Albaz, just like the combo I showed you earlier. This lets us make the Albion. And now we can use Albion's effect to fuse. We're of course going to banish the dark so we can get that search, but now we can banish the Cartesia on the field and that lets us go into our Granginol. Granginol hits the field. We can go chain link two and chain link one. We're going to go ahead and pick ourselves up that Hawk and now we can send the Bestial Lubelion from deck to grave. But then after all that's resolved, we can tribute off this Albion to special summon Lubelion. Now we can use that Lubelion to go ahead and grab Lost. And unfortunately, like I mentioned, the Summon of Colossus is a special summon, not a fusion summon, so you will not get a search off the Lost. But of course, now we can discard the Hawk. We can bring back the Dark. And again, now we've met all the requirements we need. We can summon Colossus from our extra deck to the field. And now we're set up. What a crazy first turn board, but we have a couple of options here in the end phase. Of course, we're going to activate the Albion to grab a quick play spell, but the question becomes, which one do we grab? There's a reason I fuse with the Albur on field. That way it's in the grave and not just stuck on the field. This makes it to where our Branded Red is live as an option. So now we can activate Branded Red as an interruption, adding the Albur to hand. In addition, you could just add branded opening to hand and then you can pitch another card from your hand in the end phase this will summon quem which will then dump albaz to grave and this sets up another interruption on your opponent's turn because once your opponent starts going from the extra deck you can also bring albaz out from the grave now infuse into mirror jade which is really insane but again sky's the limit with what this end board can do again your opponent can't search cards because of colossus draco stapelia is a negate granganol can tag out at any time as well to go into another monster negate if you desperately needed it like i said if you went with with branded in red. Now you have the Alibur. You can fuse with two on field and the Alibur in hand. You can destroy two cards and draw another as well. This will also get you a search with branded lost for follow up on the next turn. Or like I said, if you went with the branded opening and you dumped the Albaz, the second your opponent summons something from the extra deck, you can bring Albaz out onto the field, discard a card. This will go into Mirror Jade. And again, the branded loss would trigger. You could grab a Mercourier as another interruption. Or again, you could just grab follow up by grabbing Albion to 
dump the Retribution to Grave for the turn after. Again, these Thunder Dragon cards essentially act like the Dragoon package in your deck, just giving you another layer of stuff that your deck can do. But I know I personally have been loving this variant, and I think there's so much room for it to grow. But that's going to wrap things up for today's video. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate all the support. And let me know if you guys have any other ideas that can help this deck improve. I know I'm so excited to see where this format goes. But here's hoping to see you guys on the next one. Peace.